Hello and welcome to Ember's Reading Room. Hey, it's a book that's not a two-minute story. Is that a little golden book I spot? Yes, yes it is. Also, it's a licensed little golden book. I believe I used to watch a TV show about this. I see a new playlist coming on. <laughs> so this is The Biscuits in Double Trouble by Gina Ingolia. Illustrated by John Costanza. Oh, cute little art. Are those pussy willows? Cattails. Cattails. They see your name in the book. Yes, yes, my mother did that a lot. It always bugged me because I'm like, you're writing in a book. I know there's a spot that says this little golden book belongs to. But you're defiling the sacredness of the book. It's all set for tomorrow, said Wags. The beavers will help us fix the dam. It's too bad the strongest trees grow so far up the river, said Bum. I just hope we don't run into King Max. My paws get cold even thinking about him. As you were reading that, I was getting kind of confused by their expressions. They looked, they looked very concerned. Like, it doesn't match the tone of the first part of the sentence at all to me. Yeah, the first part is... Hey, we're all set. The beavers will help us. And the second part is, ooh, I don't want to see King Max. But their expressions are more like they just discovered that the dam was broken. I if there was some disconnect in the art versus the text. Like there was a draft where the art was done and then they realized, oh, we had to rewrite this. Well, we'll see if it's a continuing trend. But the art's very nice, very illustrated probably matches the show because I vaguely remember watching this show as well but I have no clear memory of it to compare. Me either because unlike some other shows from my childhood that I vaguely remember I haven't run across videos of this on YouTube you know like the paw paw bears and the gummy bears. <laughs> I, d I don't remember running across videos of yeah. this. I don't think there's any memes around this show because that's what usually would you catch because the gummy bears is a big meme thing. Mm. At that very minute, King Max was talking about the biscuits. I want that treasure, he said, and I am going to get it. The biscuits will never let you have it, said Shecky. King John gave it to them. The biscuits are just a bunch of little dogs, snorted Max. They can be tricked. Wow. Something's off about the art. Look at that weird photocopy thing we ran into with some of the other books. Look how fuzzy the lines are. It's like it was double printed. Ah, uh, but only King Max. Shecky doesn't look as far off. But there's some evidence of it around his eyes. It's mostly King Max, like you said. The lines of his face are just kind of, especially his hand over here. Look at that. Just clearly double lines. Interesting misprints. Well, they're running off thousands of copies every minute, so I wonder if this makes this book worth more. Well, let's see, at the time it retailed for 89 cents, so... Wow, that much? Yes. An old painting of King John had fallen off the wall. Throw that picture away, Max ordered Shecky. You know, Highness, said Shecky. King John looks a little like me. You, hooted Max, you could never look like a king. Go away, I want to take a nap. Maybe the nose? But that's it. Max and the... King look more similar to each other than... Well, they're both kings. They, Since we don't remember the series, they could be brothers or cousins. What's really interesting is I just noticed like he looks really ragged. King Max looks really ragged. There's part of his shoe slash sock missing. And then there's the knee, hole in the knee, elbow. His crown is crooked and bent. Well, remember, he says he wants the treasure. I, I think he kind of needs the money. Ah! Uh... Then how can he pay a court jester? Because that's what the other guy looks like. Who says he gets paid? Mm. Max was fast asleep in his weedy garden when he felt a tap on his shoulder. He woke up and looked right into King John's eyes. King John! gasped Max. Surprise! laughed Shecky, pulling off his fake beard and mustache. I told you I looked like him. But you're so tall, said Max. Easy, said Checky. I'm on stilts. Okay, easily tricked. I get where this is going now. Though I could have sworn the Tiny Toons um, 
mantra was, villains always fall for cheesy disguises. Though, in the Pokemon world, Ash falls for easy disguises. Max laughed. I've got an idea. You can be King John, and I'll dress up as your servant. Then we'll find the biscuits. They'll be glad to give the treasure back to us. But they know King John is dead, said Shecky. Max smiled. Leave everything to me. Wow. We got to use the D word. Yeah. Casually. Yeah. I mean, for a kid's show. Is this a Disney Channel show or what? I don't think it's a Disney property, but I think Disney broadcast it. Yeah, the art style kind of reminds me of a... Specifically the humans. I just can't pinpoint... Oh, the humans remind me a little bit of the humans in Smurfs. Yeah. Kind of like that, except... It's hard to pinpoint. And... The art is well done, by the way. I don't have anything against the art. It's just like little oddities pop out to me in the printing issue, basically. But it's all very nicely illustrated. The colors are it's kind of interesting. I wonder how they colored it. Because I see some artifacting from like a human touch colored them instead of... Oh yeah, when this came out, a human did color them and probably it was just scanned or somehow reprinted. I can't remember how they did it back then. I don't know if it was computers or what. Uh, in 1984? Hmm. Probably was, Xerox. I was going to say Xerox. The next day, the biscuits waited for the beavers. Where are they? asked Mooch. If they don't show up, we'll have to do the work. Are you kidding? said Downer. We could never cut down those big trees. Okay, the dog's name is Mooch. And what he just said, I guess he's a moocher. Well, didn't you just notice what Downer said? We could never cut down those big trees. Oh, God. W what is the princess? A princess? Probably. Her, her name may be on the next page, but since we're going over names now, let's go back to the first page. Wags. I guess he's cheerful because tail wag. Bump. W where does bump fit in? Uh, he's probably the bruiser. Good point. All right. Look, said lady. Ah. There we go. Two people are coming. As the pair got nearer, Spinner took off his glasses and polished them. It can't be, he said. It looks like King John. Spinner? Yes. I guess he spins something. He's a bard. Look at the outfit. Spins a tail. Oh, my. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, I thought I made. Oh. <laughs> oh, spins a tail. He's a dog. He has a tail. Oh, God. Ah. <laughs> uh. The biscuits could not believe their eyes. It was King John. The tiny dogs threw themselves down on their front paws and knelt before their old king. You may rise, my small friends, said King John, winking at his servant. Oi, I'm not quite sure what's going on here, but I have a feeling they're either going to get tricked and then something stupid's going to happen like he trips on his robe or something. Just interesting. Also, his eyes are kind of crossed in this left image here. Kind of kooky, really. He just looks angry. Oh, well, he's a king dressed up like a servant. Yeah. Who's ha going to have to defer to his court gesture mm. in front of other people. Sorry, my eyes read that too fast. <laughs> we thought you were dead, said Wags. What happened? King John's fat servant spoke up. My master didn't really die. He was testing you to see if you'd take good care of his treasure. So how did you read that too quickly? I read that entire thing before I read it out loud. Ah, so you're already going to the next page. No, I was already going, ow, ow, ow. <laughs> we sure did, said Fetch. My paw has a blister on it from all the polishing I did last Thursday. The treasure's shinier now than when we got it. The servant's eyes gleamed. My master would love to see it, he said. Right now. Yeah, and you can see him showing a blister on his paw, too. Mm-hmm. I'm guessing he fetches things. Probably. Hey, our names define our personalities. Newer shows do that, too. My Little Pony. Jane and the Dragon. Yeah. I mean, come on. The gardener's named Drake. The cook is named Pepper. Those don't define personalities. That defines their job. Just then, Scat came panting up the road. Look, Scat, said Wags, King John's back. But Scat was not interested. I've got to talk to all the biscuits, he said, puffing. Alone. 
So scat as in get lost or scat as in the other thing? This is a kid's show, so I'm guessing as in get lost. He also seems to be the youngest based on how small he is compared to the other, uh, what were they called? Biscuits. Biscuits. Yes, you can tell we really don't remember this show. I'm thinking we didn't watch it that much. No, but I know we watched it some. Because otherwise, why would I have this book? Scat led the biscuits to the edge of the river. You're being rude to King John, scolded Spinner. Rude, said Scat. They passed me on the road and I heard them talking. Thank goodness they didn't see me. They're really King Max and Shecky in disguise. What? gasped all the biscuits. And that's not all, said Scat. The beavers can't make it. Oh, great, just great, sighed Downer. Wags thought for a minute. Then he said, we may not need their help after all. Uh-oh, I know what they're gonna do. Also, Fetch does not look like he's all there. No, no, no. It's a little reminiscent of Ed from uh, The Lion King. Hmm. Wags walked back to King John. Before we give you the treasure, he said, could you get an axe from your castle? Huh? asked King John. His servant poked him. I mean, yes, of course. Come, servant. Hmm. I just realized another thing they remind me of. Hanna-Barbera cartoons. It could be. It does have kind of that look. When they were gone, Wag said, Don't let on that we know who they are. We'll get Max to do our work. He'll never do it, moaned Downer. Max will do anything for the treasure, said Lady. It's a perfect plan. I bet you she had a really cute voice, too. Probably high-pitched. Soon Max and Shecky came back with the axe. Your Majesty, could your servant help us? asked Wags. Certainly, said Shecky. What can he do? Chop down seven trees, cut them into logs, roll them into the river so that they'll float down to the dam. He'd be happy to, said Shecky. Whee! You have an axe, just kill the dogs. Ow, I know they're using the D word, but ooh, nice conclusion there. I'm sorry, he has an axe. Also, that looks a little reversed than what I remember. In my head, I have the colors on the axe as red and silver, not silver and red. Mm. Do I get the point? You've got to be kidding, screamed Max. Wags looked closely at him. King John's servants love to help us. Are you sure you're one of them? Of course I am, Max said, raising the axe. King Max chopped down the trees, cut them into logs, and rolled them into the river. The biscuits ate a picnic lunch. Shecky relaxed in a shady spot nearby. Uh, that classic reversal. I had a little bit of that fuzziness again on this one. Not as bad as that one, but you can see around here and the eyes. That kind of fuzziness came from, like, the print heads, like, are a little off or something. But you can see the picnic, the chopping, the tossing the logs in. By sunset, King Max had finished the job. He stumbled over to the resting biscuits. Where's the treasure? He croaked. You and King John close your eyes, said Wags. We'll take you to it. The biscuits led Shecky and Max to a small cliff at the edge of a lake. When you're ready, jump into the treasure, said Bump. Wow, thought Max. He said, jump into the treasure. It must be huge. Then he and Shecky jumped into the cold water. Ooh, we can see them like walking off a cliff and a river or small pond nearby. Well, you know, they just finished fixing the dam. Ah. Well, not totally fixing it because they just put the logs there, but that's enough to uh, slow down the flow of water at least. Also, remember kids, only Scrooge McDuck can dive into treasure. Wags laughed and called to them. Remember, King John, you said clean water was one of the world's greatest treasures. That's, that's funny. That, that works. Then the biscuits hurried home. Next time I'll really trick them, sputtered Max. Next time, big Shecky, could you do it all by yourself? Cute. And I'm not encouraging violence against dogs. I'm just wondering why when he comes back with a weapon... Well, he wasn't thinking about using it as a weapon. He was just coming back to use it. Though I'm trying to figure out 
why he okayed going back to the axe. Would that really have... Mm. Well, remember, he was just as the servant. Yeah, but he kind of did that secret elbow thing to poke the other guy into saying yes. Interesting. Also, they didn't know what the axe was for. The biscuits just asked for it. Hmm. And I have a feeling that this show didn't really include much violence. I think it was mostly about trickery and overly complex um, Ella Glomgold's style plans based on this book. And we have all the classic personalities they used back then. You had the token female, you had the youngster, you had the lead, you had the wiser older person, and you had the dunce. And a bruiser, and yeah, and sometimes the bruiser and the dunce were the same character, you know, to change things up. And sometimes the bruiser was also the leader, and villains were usually murky and lurky level of ineffective. Yeah. Because if they were a serious threat, you know, how could you have a serialized series? Hmm. And now I want to track down the intro. Because, like all children's cartoon of the time, the intro should tell us everything about the show. And now you know the plot. And yeah, even after reading this, I only have the vaguest of recollections. So, I watched it some, apparently not much. Because if I'd watched it more, reading the book should have done pretty much what watching the YouTube videos does. Spark recollections. I don't have the theme song in my head. I don't remember what the treasure looks like. I don't remember when King John gave it to them. Obviously that happened in the title sequence. Yeah, I don't really remember much about this show other than the way the characters, specifically the dogs, look. Other than that, I have no recollection at all. I don't even remember the two main villains, apparently. Yeah, not really. It, do it does not click at all. Wow. What's really funny is the one I remember the most out of the dogs is the princess. No, well, being the only girl, she does kind of stand out. Mm hmm And she's in the standard colors. Pink. But she's a yellow dog. Does that even work color-wise? Yeah. Pink and red. But yellow. Yeah, yeah, yeah I think that works. I had to, like, try to pop a color chart in my head. Well, it's yellow and purple that are complementary colors, being across the color wheel. So apparently our memory lane is uh, full of gaps right here. Yeah, with this one particular show, because I got nothing. Mm -mm. So this has been A Little Golden Book, The Biscuits in Double Trouble by Gina Ingolia, illustrated by John Costanza. Thank you for listening. Yeah, we have a lot of these. E even just if you want to stick with only golden books, we have a fair number just of golden books. Uh, we also have a lot of other content that isn't book themed. It would be the pop culture section, which comprises a majority of the overall channel. So you can check that out. Also, a lot of little golden books are still in print. But I'm not so sure about a licensing for a show that's not really popular anymore. So we'll see if we can scrounge up a link for you if you want to check this one out. It will probably be a used copy. Uh, most, most likely at this point. Uh, also, Ebates link. Because I can. Amazon and Ebates are not sponsors of or in any way affiliated with Ember's Reading Room or any content of the Lux Analysis channel. Thanks for listening.